Hey, how's it going? Nat here. Let's check out what's been making news. We're one step closer to understanding one of the world's most mysterious and famous monuments, Stonehenge. Archaeologists have just made a new discovery near the site they reckon is more than four and a half thousand years old. Here's Charlotte. It's clearly from some like prehistoric sacred site. Nah, I reckon it's some sort of like sun calendar thing. Hmm. Look, I'm just saying, guys, but maybe aliens put them there. No. Oh, definitely yeah. Not. We're not the only ones scratching our heads. For years, people have been debating the origins of Stonehenge. These massive, carefully arranged stones have been standing relatively strong on Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England for thousands of years. But today, we still don't know who built Stonehenge or why. Now, archaeologists reckon they're one step closer to finally understanding what it's all about. They've just discovered a series of huge holes or shafts near the site. They say there's at least 20 of them, each about 10 metres long and 5 metres deep, and they reckon they might have acted as a boundary to a sacred area connected to the Henge. The orientation of them, the, the spacing of them, would suggest that they have some um, organised sort of ritualistic uh, um, reason for being there. Researchers say the find shows an even more advanced society existed thousands of years ago than we could ever imagine. So while we're getting answers, we're also left with a lot more questions. Oh, I know, it's like a game of dominoes for giants. Oh. If you go to school in New South Wales, well, you're gonna start learning a new curriculum from next year. It'll affect everyone from kindergartners to high schoolers. You'll have fewer subjects to choose from and spend more time studying English, maths and science. The state government says it's all about getting back to basics. It'll set our students up for life. It'll improve their opportunity to be their best and most importantly, raise standards across the board. Australia, along with New Zealand, are hot favourites to host the 2023 Women's World Cup. There's just one other candidate left, Colombia, after Japan pulled out of the hosting race. FIFA will decide who gets it on Friday morning. Some students at Good Shepherd Lutheran School in South Australia are farming fish to grow fresh fruit and veggies. You're probably thinking, well, how does that work? Well, it's called aquaponics, and we'll let them explain. Today, we're going to teach you about aquaponics. Aquaponics is basically um, our system that we have here. It's where we grow a lot of plants, but instead of using your normal ground and soil, we use the water and fish to fertilise it, like fish um, poo. So fish poo has lots of nutrients in it, which is good for the plants. So it uses 90% less water than most farms because it is recycled through the plants and tanks. So this is where it all begins. We've got some goldfish in here. Small perch in here. They start off very small, but some of them, like the rainbow trout, they grow very quick, very fast. We have to make sure that they're fed every day, and we do quite a lot of tests to make sure that the water is the right temperature, like it's not too toxic for the fish, and so they can stay nice and healthy. The fish group is basically the roots of it, because if the fish group fails, then the whole project fails. I've also learned how to like uh, plant and harvest a lot of things, so that's really um, fun. Thanks for letting us teach you about aquaponics. Bye. Bye. Now I'm going to put on my suit, shine my shoes and find my best monocle because these next stories are a bit fancy. 2,292 potted plants have been treated to a special show at Barcelona Opera House. The string quartet wanted to do something a bit different to celebrate the end of Spain's strict lockdown and these leafy listeners lucked out. Okay, we've seen mannequins in restaurants before, but how about Victorian era mannequins in a Victorian era establishment? Well, to be accurate, they're all dressed like characters from the book Around the World in 80 Days. I mean, if you told me at the beginning of the year I'd be dressing mannequins, um, I wouldn't have believed you. This hair salon in New York is famous for its $1,000 beauty bundles. Yep, you heard that right, 1,000 US dollars. That's nearly 1,500 Aussie ones. But that hasn't stopped 1,200 customers joining their wait list after 100 days in lockdown. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We'll be back again tomorrow with more fancy news.